悪いな。クリムジョ。<笑>よがいす。It's your boy Ed again from the AK Mindset. And today, you know, we're, we're doing something a bit different. I'm doing like a, not really a movie review, but like I just want to talk about the series because I just finished watching it again. And as you've guessed from the title, it's about a silent voice. One of my favorite movies of all time.、Um, it's going to be a bit somber, you know, a bit low key, not as energetic as my normal videos, but. That's just because of the nature of the anime. So, a silent voice.、Um, here I am after watching it for the third time. And it doesn't sound significant because, like, I only watched it three times. I've seen people who've watched series like four times, five times, ten times. And this is just a movie. It's not even a series. It's like two hours. But something about me, I don't re watch stuff. It's just something about me. I just I can't. I find it incredibly hard to re watch stuff. It's just difficult. Like, I have to really, really like you or be incredibly bored. And it's not a good thing if I watch you bored because basically you're going in one ear and coming out of the other. But I don't re watch stuff. Basically, things I re watch, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because I'm addicted to that.、Um, Hunter x Hunter, Attack on Titan, Naruto, One Piece, you know, the OGs, like the best of the best. That's what I re watch. But a sound voice. Found me watching it three times, which is unheard of for me. But I think the third time, this the most recent time I watched it, which is like yesterday, <laughs> hit me different for some reason. I don't know. The first time I watched it, I was like, wow, this is a good movie. Second time I watched it with the family, finally got my mom to watch anime. I know, crazy. African parent watching anime, crazy. But you know, when you're watching it with your family, it's like you're watching them watching it, if that makes sense. Like, yo, look at the series, man. Isn't it great? Come on, it's great. So I spent more time s looking for the reaction instead of like watching the movie properly. But this third time, I, it just hit different. I mean, I've been going through stuff in my life personally, I've been a bit down, but maybe that's why this hit me differently. It's just the themes explored in this movie is just amazing. I mean, you talk about bullying, depression, social anxiety, loneliness, and forgiveness. Those are the basic themes explored. And it hit different, man. So I'm just gonna give my opinions on it. One of my favorite movies, period. And I know you can't say it a silent voice without bringing up your name. And if it's interesting to anyone, I prefer a silent voice.、Um, the difference is a silent voice is one of my favorite movies, period. Like ever. But your name is like my favorite anime movie. One of my favorite anime movies. If that makes sense. It's like a two different leagues. I'm not saying your name is bad. But it not really angers me, but it, it's kind of upsetting that. Your name kind of overshadowed a silent voice because I don't like comparing stuff because you know it gets toxic and people just argue without <laughs> enjoying both series. I enjoy both series, but when, I, when it came out, I was people, like looking for people to talk about a silent voice and it's just your name, your name is better, don't watch silent voice, watch your name instead. Your name, your name, your name, your name. I was like, but a silent voice, I watch your name, and you know when people hype stuff up, then it's like, wait, but what you said was better than this, better than this. That's how I felt. But a silent voice is amazing, your name is amazing as well. Watch your name. I'm not like putting it down or anything, but I guess that's enough of like an introduction. It's a bit long winded. <laughs> so let's get into it.、Um, a silent voice.、Um, just a, snop- a brief synopsis, I guess. It's,、um, it's a story about a guy. He starts off with suicidal thoughts. He wants to kill himself for reasons unknown at the beginning. And you know, obviously, it gives you that impact. You feel sorry for him. Why do you want to kill yourself and stuff like that? And you see he has a family as well. It's like, oh. You have a mom, sister, like a niece, you know, why would you want to do this? But obviously, we don't know what, what he's been through. Then immediately, he goes into like a backstory about how he bullied <laughs>、um, a deaf kid, a deaf, beautiful, beautiful kid, which we'll get into in our character later. But he, bu- he bullies a deaf kid with his friends. And basically, once he goes a step too far,、um, the kid moves away.、Um, and. He is solely blamed for it, even though he was the mastermind, but he had other people doing it as well. And everyone blamed him, forget about, forgetting about themselves. And he became the new person they bullied. And he became a social outcast, basically. And we go from there, from elementary school, I think, to middle school. The rumors followed him, so he 
it basically became a social act, um, outcast, having severe social anxiety. And, you know, seeing he didn't want to live like that anymore, it was kind of not a fun life to live. He decided to take his life. Then, before he does that, he tries to make amends, you know, pays his mom back for what she's done for him because his mom had to do, like, pay money and, like, <laughs> make up for the mess he did as a kid, paying money to the deaf kid's mom for breaking stuff. He shouldn't have broke, like, the hearing aids, stuff like that. He, try to apologize to the deaf kid and that's when the story changes or where the story picks up i guess instead of saying bye or saying sorry he kind of asks to be friends the same way the deaf kid asks to be friends when the, he was young and he hits him like oh wow this is what you're trying to tell me and he didn't want to kill himself anymore because of that interaction he had with the deaf girl and that's basically when the story goes you see how he gets back with most people from school and how it goes from there and we're gonna go step by step and going through why this is an amazing movie so first of all i want to talk about the first theme of the movie which is bullying and whew, every time i watch it it becomes even more uncomfortable <laughs> each and every time just watching what these people do to this poor poor little girl shoko shoko needs to be protected she's one of my favorite characters in anime period and i don't even know why she's not deep deep like that i mean she has a beautiful story arc but she's not someone like Axelad has deep meanings and deep rooted like themes to him but for some reason I just you can't hate Shoko if you hate Shoko I'm looking at you different basically like someone give this girl a hug like and protect her from everyone every single one especially people like Naoka because I hate I'm not going to start but yeah she needs to be protected at all costs so bullying the way this movie like shows how bullying affects people is is different because it gives you like a parallel view of what bullying does but to two different people but first person is the person who deserves sympathy because you know she's a little kid who just has a disability she can't control and second person that gets bullied is the person who bullied the first person and you're almost like thank you that's karma you deserve it but it's still uncomfortable you don't well for me anyway i didn't feel comfortable when he was going through it either so shoko she was deaf she came into the class basically white people said bullying her because they got tired of trying to interact with her because she was she was using a book and kids would be kids they found it uncomfortable and the best thing to do was to bully a kid for her disability it was i couldn't really understand how how that yeah because but that's what they did and people were just taking it too far and it was it was weird because when it started people were like interested they were like wanting to talk to her they wanted to know but they got they got tired of it really really quickly um, it went from like making fun of the way she speaks to taking her hair and aids and chucking it and breaking it to taking the book she uses to talk like she had a book where she asks you to write in it so you can interact they take it then chuck it around chuck it in the pond from there to making fun of people trying to help her to just making her life a living hell basically to constantly sign in let's be friends and people are ignoring her chucking stuff at her basically it's very frustrating if you want to be angry watch the scenes of the bullying of shoko because you know the rage i felt was like nothing ever <laughs> i've ever felt before then obviously she got fed up her mom got fed up and she moved her to a different school then because of that the principal comes in it's like yo why why is what i haven't heard this bullying going on then the stupid teacher i think i haven't heard of people talk about the teacher much because the teacher said it was Shoyo, which is our main character, blames him for it, rightfully so. But it shows that he knew about this, but did nothing to stop the bullying. Like, he saw it happen. And this is so relatable to real life, because teachers, obviously, respect teachers. You know, which teachers have been doing important stuff, especially in these times. But teachers see bullying so many times and decide to ignore it. And I'm very confused. But you know, when it's gone to a point of no return, it's like, yo, I know you did disciplinary action for you and basically everyone denied it and that's when it shifts because our main character Shoya says well I wasn't the only one I was kind of deflecting I wasn't the only one who did it this other guy did it too and obviously everyone denied it didn't like it because it was a snitch and that's when his bullying started and anime does this beautifully because it shows a parallel of what happens because the exact same way she was bullied he was bullied too he was pushing the pond it was stuff was written on him on his desk he was basically what he did to people that happened to him and yeah i didn't feel 
like happy like finally you got what you deserve it was like wow why are they doing it to him because the same people who were bullying him bullied the other girl so it was like why isn't why is he the only one who's getting punished for a crime a whole group committed and it was very uncomfortable still it was very weird we we're supposed to feel like finally calm up but it was i don't feel that it was like wow you guys need to stop just how about everyone just stops bullying okay teach him his lesson and tell him why bullying is wrong but that's not bully but that's the way they do bullying is it was different because the normal story arc people who bully get their comeuppance you know like okay you've been bullying people the person who gets bullied stands up to him fights or say something smart and quirky like rebuttals it and you know the bully gets ashamed he moves out and you know that's it with the bully but the bully gets bullied but by other bullies i haven't seen this anywhere there might be other movies um or other animes that have done it but i've not paid attention to it as much but I think this might be the first time I've experienced it anyway and it was just different the way they do bullying because there was no comeuppance for every bully just one person and he became from a uh, oppressor to the oppressed and it was just uncomfortable then because of that <laughs> it creates a sense of loneliness which is the second theme of the movie because Shoka gets bullied she moves away you know because obviously <laughs> she won't deal with it anymore so Shoya becomes the main target and he gets bullied by his friends which is a weird thing to experience bullied by the people you hanged out with bullied by the people you were with when you bullied other people it's a weird experience so from being the popular kid in elementary to being the castaway the one that's shunned in middle school and even in high school he becomes lonely he has no one around him he thinks because the way this anime tackles loneliness it shows the people around him who love him deeply you can see his niece which is the cutest person maria needs to be yeah i love that child she's so cute and one of the scenes that we're going to talk about later was just had a lump in my throat when that happened but he has his niece he has his mum, he has his sister but even though the sister doesn't get explored that much but there are people who cares about him but he still feels lonely and he's not the only one because the other main character shoko also goes through loneliness even from the very beginning because her is a bit more deeply rooted she transferred she was basically looking for friends and she didn't get friends she kept she kept asking and asking and these people kids kids are evil bro <laughs> kids are evil evil people but this kids knew she wanted to be friends but kept making fun of the fact she was asking kept shunning her kept ignoring her over and over again so obviously the loneliness sips in and she felt lonely and she even has more people compared to Shoya could argue who loved her she had a sister she had a mom she had a grandma people her family who cared about her but she still felt an insane sense of loneliness because the people she wanted validation from I guess didn't give it to her now because people and that's the thing about loneliness most people who feel an intense feeling of loneliness at majority of the time they don't are not lonely or they decide to ignore the people who are around them Obviously, there's some people who are truly alone who will need help, but sometimes you feel lonely and you forget, oh, my mom's there. She's taking care of me, buys everything I need. She does this, she does that. Or my dad's there. Or my sister, my little sister, my big sister, my big brother, my, my little brother, or my cousins, my uncles, my aunties. But it's, what causes loneliness is not getting attention or validation or approval for the people you need the most. And once you don't get that, the intense sense of dread and unwantedness is just sickening. Because most people have felt it. I felt it. You know, I want to be friends with this person. I want to talk to that person. The person doesn't even give you the time of day. It can be very painful. It can be very dreadful. It's like very, very painful, basically. And that's what these characters go through. Even though there are people there who love them, who want the best from them. But still, they don't understand that. They don't feel that. It's not communicate to them and this loneliness leads to bad bad thoughts of suicide and because of how they felt you know they thought the best answer was to take a life um Shoya in the first few scenes of the movie when he basically decided to sell everything he had make money give the money to his mom to pay back for what she did literally decided that they are not going to live past this date and decided to take his life luckily enough he met Shoko and that changed and Shoko goes through the same thing in like the middle of the story where she felt like she was causing intense pain for Shoya and the one of the people she truly 
wanted to be happy, wanted to be friends. She felt she was causing misery, which intensified her loneliness, thinking that if I'm not here, he's going to be happy. And she wanted to kill herself as well. Very, very sudden, like very very painful stuff to watch through it was very it was very painful um loneliness don't take it for granted you know people need you you can you don't know how far a hello a thank you a hi how's your day can go for someone you know just speak to people because loneliness can there's different stages it can be loneliness you feel loneliness then you see your friends you're happy again you can be loneliness you see your friends but you don't feel like friends because there's no special connection and you still feel lonely and there's a loneliness it goes to another level where you feel like, well, the world doesn't need me. And once it gets to that point, that's when it gets very, very dangerous. And yeah, then before we go into some other themes, I want to talk about the characters. Um, we've talked about Shoya and Shoko already. Um, Shoya being our main character and Shoko being our main female lead. And these two characters are beautiful written. You know, the character development that both of them have is amazing. Shoya being from the most, one of the characters I hated the most as a kid to having... I feel like it was maybe the writer almost tricked us into like being sorry for him and start liking him because of pity and it worked. I'm not, I'm not bad at it because I felt really sorry for him. I want him to have the world and just be friends and want people to be friends with him. And the only reason we felt this, most people felt this, because he wanted to be better. He was striving to be a better person and then that's why that's 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 one of the reasons if you want to be a better person you deserve the chance to be a, a better person and it went from being almost like he wants to be a white knight to like say sorry to the person who bullied so he makes himself be, feel better and that quickly changed to him deeply caring for the person and actually wanting them to be happy in life and not caring about himself most of the time about how the person feels so we love the character then shoko shoko my sweet summer child you beautiful beautiful character she was just she she just didn't she didn't deserve what she went went through man being bullied being deaf you know two things that no one should go through because it's a difficult thing and two things that she really couldn't control and she had such an intense self-loathing it was difficult to watch through she was just uh, it was just sad and characters made it even hard for her to like live and it was it was just frustrating watching how people treated her and she just wanted to be treated normal like a normal person she didn't want pity she just wanted to be friends with people she didn't get that and yeah it's just it's just sad so in the end it was just when she notices that her self-loathing actually has a negative effect on her family um it hits her she's like oh, wait I, I can't do this the other people who cares about who care about me and I need to live and be alive to show appreciation. And yeah, I think she was just a sweet character. She forgave the person that bullied her. Most people would bleed her. She, I don't think she even was that upset because she kept saying sorry and it was just difficult to watch. But Shoko is just such a complicated character. You know, it's, it was almost annoying sometimes. Like, I don't mean that in a bad way because she was the one going through so much pain, but she was the one who said sorry the most in the whole movie. She kept apologizing when she didn't need to. And it was just... It was heart wrenching and it was just difficult to watch. But Shoko, an amazing character, very complicated, so many layers. We love her. Then we have Yazuru, my favorite character of the show, which is Shoko's sister. And she basically lived her life for her sister and it was the sweetest thing to watch. And the friendship between Yazuru and Shoya was so beautiful as well. <laughs> From the first interaction, when she said he was, she was the boyfriend of Shoko, just to like keep people away, to actually having a friendship with show you him helping her study and stuff like that it was just a beautiful relationship she was so good she she basically did everything she could in her power to make her sister feel better to make her sister stop saying she wanted to kill herself and for most of the movie what she did didn't it didn't work and yeah and uh, grandma says this like you know you're living for your sister you're like you need to live for yourself but she's like i want to do this i'm doing this because i want to because that's what i want to do then when her grandma dies as well it was just poof, it was heart-wrenching she was and the first person she speaks to well we see her speak to was shoya and you know it was it was it was heartwarming i love you i love yarazu man she's she's so sweet and deserves all the love as well she needs to be protected all because she was such a beautiful real character then we go to another character one of my favorite basically the comic relief of the movie his name is nagaska and we love nagaska he's so sweet he's a, basically a friend that everyone wants to have he's so sweet he's the best friend of our main character shoya and he's a bit possessive and it's, it's harmless it's just basically like i said before he's a friend 
you want to have. And even though Shuri says some terrible stuff to him close to the end of the movie, he's, he's still a friend. Shuri was basically the first friend he had. And it's just, you could see because he he, he was very possessive of him. But it was a sweet, it was, it was, he was sweet. We love Nagasuka. He was, he was great. Then we have um, Miyoko. Miyoko, um, I tried to find, because the thing with every character, they have a flaw, but... I guess they tried to portray Miyoko as a coward who ran away from her problems. But I keep having to remind myself, they were kids. She was starting to get bullied because she was hanging out with Shoko. And she moved and moved away for her own mental health. <laughs> I keep saying this, your mental health is important than most and every other person. So take, take your mental health very seriously. I, I, I didn't find anything wrong with this character, to be honest. I mean, they tried to portray her as a coward or someone who runs away from her problems, but... Um, I'd rather run away from her problems than not even it wasn't even her problems she was trying to get bullied and she's around toxic people and she decided to not be around toxic people maybe I'm missing something deeper and I need to watch more to really understand her character but she was she was great she needed to be explored more I didn't really feel connection with her but she basically did nothing wrong in my opinion she was gonna get bullied she decided to not get bullied by moving away and it's fine and yeah yeah go I liked her but she wasn't that significant in the story for me anyway I mean even though she was one of the friends that Shoko had that didn't bully her <laughs> at any point in time. So yeah. Then we have um, two characters that I, I absolutely, absolutely hate that pissed me off to no end. We have Naoka. Um, I mean, it took me three times to truly appreciate the kind of character Naoka is. She was the person who knows what kind of character she is. She knows who she is and she was unapologetic about it. And that has my respect. That has my respect. You know, she was a terrible kid and she didn't really care to change she didn't want to be like false friendship like she didn't want to be basically I understand why people like her because she wasn't trying to be a white knight like sure because he was at some point he was trying to be nice to like help his own mental health and help his own grief but Naoka didn't care she's like I'm not gonna be friends with you I don't like you and I'm not gonna try and fake it and but that doesn't excuse the fact she was just a horrible character she for most of this like she didn't change most people in elementary school changed when they grew up to some extent they had some things that they were still like like Miyako was still like running away from her problems I guess Shoko was still like self-loathing Shoya was still um kind of wanted to join in loneliness but Naoka just she was just a terrible <laughs> person true and true to, almost at the very end when she had a little bit of character development but she was just frustrating to watch she was she was she was frustrating <laughs> I can't even, like without going on a rant I don't even know how to explain this character she was just she was annoying. She was terrible. But at least in the end, she had some character development. Um, but I think her kind of meanness to Shoko was... I understood it in like the second or third rewatch of this movie. Because I understand, oh wait, she likes Shoya. She likes him. So the fact that Shoya's trying to get really close to Shoko and actually be good friends and like almost be romantic, like irks her to no end. But she really liked Shoya and it was evident when he... When he fell, like jumped out, well not jumped out, when he fell, she was there to nurse him like every single day, even though she didn't let Shoko in. That was my, I hated that scene so much. Like what, you're not even their mom, why? What gives the right? But she didn't, <laughs> she was she was nursing Shoya when he was in hospital, when he was in his coma. And yeah, she really liked him. So I guess that's why she felt like it was right to bully somebody else. But basically to end this mini rant, she kind of became a better character in the end when she, we saw her learning sign language. Just better understand what Shoka, the basically better understand Shoka and what she is as a person instead of like just hating her without knowing who she is or trying to be understanding of her situation. So in the end, it took me three time, three watches, but yeah, I don't hate her as much. Now the character that I absolutely hate, despise, oof, is Mickey. Now this bit, I don't want to, let's not, let's not, let's not cause some. I hate Mickey. I don't care what you say. She's not a great character. She's not a good character. No, she plays victim. She just since since in elementary school, like you no, know, those people who like see. I think okay, I'm like <laughs> I'm like all over the place right now because I hate this character so much. But I think the reason I hate the character so much is because I feel like this character is most of us. I'm sure most of us have seen bullying and stuff like that, and just decided to see past it because we don't want to be involved. We don't want to get bullied, or it's not just our we don't care. It's not our problem. I think that's why I hate this character because she was that character, you know. So bullying happening. She laughed when people were making jokes of other people. She, you know, didn't stop. She was basically a secondary villain, but then denies that she was a villain at all, just to save face. 
when they were sh um, the teacher was shouting at them in the beginning, you know, she was the one's like, he did it. I told her to. St I told him to stop. No, you didn't. You didn't. You that. You didn't tell him to stop. She says that. Then, then when Shoya again like confronts her when they were in high school, he says the same thing. Like, no, you bullied her. Like, basically exposes him. She was a snitch. Then says, oh, I tried. I told him to stop, but he didn't listen. He doesn't listen to anyone. She's basically and she starts crying for no. Why do you cry? Why are you crying? The other one who goes through. You didn't go half the through the stuff what Shoko went through. You didn't even go to what Shoya went through, and you're crying for what? Oh, it annoyed me so much. Like, I don't even understand. She had, I think, a boyfriend, I think. And that character needed to be explored more. Apparently, he has more um, story in the manga, but I didn't read the manga. I need to read it soon. But, yeah, he... I don't even know why. She was annoying. She was frustrating because she was just kind of almost victim-blaming and, like, trying to play victim as well at the same time. She was just a very frustrating character. And I feel like she was the only one who didn't get character development. She just said... I feel like if they had an argument again, she would just go to, back to the same person she was. She was just a flimsy character. And it's not because of the writer or anything. I think that's what she is as a person. She was just annoying. I hate Mickey. I'm trying not to go into too much detail or like, because I feel like I'm going to go on a rant and why this construction of Mickey and why I hate people like that. She's just frustrating. But basically, those are the characters that come into the story. Then... The last two things, I guess, to just round this up is um, social anxiety and forgiveness. Um, the social anxiety was basically um, Shoya's a whole story arc. He got bullied so much, got into so much into depression, which can be a theme, I guess. Goes hand in hand with social anxiety. He was so depressed, so lonely. He had he'd like developed social anxiety where he couldn't look people in the face. And why I'm speaking about the social anxiety because I think one of the most beautiful moments in movies for me or anime was in the end when he takes his hand off his ears and like looks up and actually experiences life around him which was he wasn't doing for the whole movie it was so beautiful had a massive lump in his throat the size of a pineapple it was so emotional it's like wow finally because he kept looking down you know looking at the floor like couldn't look people in the eye because he just felt people thought bad things about them he was there's even a time in the in the I think it was on the start of the movie where he was like assuming what people said about him so he's just like you know what I don't, I don't want to be involved I don't want to talk to people I don't want to be friends with people they're going to hear what about what I did before so I don't even want to get involved and the social anxiety like makes him not forgive himself because I feel like he doesn't forgive himself so if you don't forgive yourself you kind of don't give a chance for other people to forgive you because you don't even acknowledge what you've done I think you don't acknowledge what you've done I've done this it was terrible let me get over it let me apologize to people and feel truly sorry then you go to the stage of being forgived like okay i forgive myself then you leave it to the person who you upset to decide if they want to forgive you or not and if they don't it doesn't like mean that you don't forgive yourself it just doesn't affect you because what well, it affects you how do i put this like it doesn't break you as a character because you've gone over what you've done you've acknowledged that you know it's wrong you move on then you, the person you upset doesn't have to forgive you because that person has a right to say no actually I don't forgive you, you did something terrible. And basically that's what he goes through at the end of the story because he finally forgives himself, gives him and which gives opportunity for other people to forgive him, especially he says some terrible stuff at the end just to push people away. But it's fine accept accepting life and that's through the help of Shoko, Yazuru and Nagaska and made me really happy. It was very emotional and yeah. Then the last one, forgiveness, which I've already like kind of talked about. I don't understand how Shoko does this and she forgives people, you know, she doesn't take things to heart. And yeah, I, f I feel like people need to forgive people more because people do terrible stuff, you know. You have a right to decide if you want to forgive them or not, it's your own right. But you'd be surprised how much forgiving someone can go a long way in their life. I mean, you, you don't owe it to them if they do something bad to you, but I feel like if you just forgive people and like let the past be the past, you'd be surprised how much of someone's mental health improves especially if they upset you and they're living in like self-loathed and stuff like that and yeah forgiveness is just important she forgave everyone you know even though she was half of the time she was blaming herself but she gave she forgave people she didn't let it down her soul you know Shoya forgave himself Shoko forgave other people Jerry Zhu forgave Shoya for doing stuff to his, her sister Nagaska forgave Shoya for the bad, terrible things he said so did Miyako and, and Miki so Forgiveness, you know, is important. It's, you know, some people take for, um, for granted, you know, just be nice, forgive, let the past be the past. Whatever happens, happens. My favorite saying of all time, you know, what's in the past is in the past. Move on, 
focus on what you and what you need to do. Don't let what other people do bring you down and lay in your heart. Because when you like, when that space opens your heart of hatred and anger, there's a, a huge weight off your shoulder when you forgive people. I think we should do that. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to say about Silent Voice. This is a long ass video. I do apologize. And if you somehow st stuck to the end, Thank you for listening. I also want to say if you're going through a tough time, you're feeling lonely, you're feeling depressed, social anxiety, you know, we're here to talk to you. We're definitely not qualified and we're not claiming to be qualified, but if you need someone to talk to you, just send us a message on Instagram or Twitter and we'll, we'll, we'll speak to you, man. We'll speak to anyone. You no, know, some people just need someone to talk to and I'll be there at least to speak to you, to reply. Just know you're not alone in the world and suicide is never the answer because the people there who do truly care about you even if you don't feel that and yeah make sure you have a blessed day wherever you are thank you for listening to me just rumble about one of my favorite movies of all time um thanks for listening to me you know that other videos for you to watch podcasts is out new episodes out every month check us out on youtube uh, instagram on twitter spotify anchor stay blessed deuces i know i said i finished it but i just look at maria and she needs to own a little bit because where is life? Where is love? Protect the little angel because she's the best. <laughs> a beautiful black little girl. We love her. And see, if you need a reason to watch this movie, just look at the scene I'm going to put on the screen and tell me you don't think that's the cutest thing you've ever seen before. Oh, Maria! You were doing water. You're crazy. You're crazy. Maria! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Watch the silent voice. You need to watch it. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Bye.